Hey YouTubers, how you all doing? Welcome to my kitchen. My name is JC and this is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays and DIY stuff on Fridays. That may sound like a crazy combination, but somehow we made it work. Uh, a lot has to do with demographics. Uh, I don't know, most people that uh, like to cook, uh, they like to work on their garden, fix their house and things of that nature. And uh, the same goes for guys who like to fish and do woodwork and things of that nature. They don't mind putting on an apron and getting the grill up and going. So today I have a very short video for you and probably want to be the shortest video in my channel. And that has to do with Malanga. I'm going to make a dish that I grew up knowing as Malanga Isleña. Uh, I know that Malanga Isleña is often uh, referred to as the species. Uh, if you're not familiar with a Malanga, this is what it looks like. Uh, some people call it taro, but this is not a taro. Uh, a taro is a cousin of the Malanga, but they are two different uh, vegetables. A, it comes in two different in the in the U.S. Mostly you find it in two different varieties. You find one that is more rounded. It still has this uh, texture, hairy, uh, rough texture on the outside, and you have these long ones. Uh, for the dish that I'm going to make, I prefer the longer ones. Uh, it is uh, it has a, a nutty, potato-like taste. Uh, could be a little bit dry. That's why I like to make it with a sauce. Uh, you can also make it a puree. Uh, replace mashed potatoes uh, and overall uh, it's a pretty pleasant uh, uh, pretty pleasant uh, vegetable kind of to break the routine you know having the same old thing uh, with that said let's get going because this is going to be a very quick video so check this out malangas are a ground provision so preparation is no different than potatoes or other root vegetables much like potatoes, they have a tendency to get dark once exposed to oxygen. So I recommend having a pot with salted water nearby as you start to peel them. We'll then bring it to a boil over medium-high heat. As it comes to temperature, you may want to bring the heat down to medium. Cooking malangas is a function of time and not temperature. If you cook them under high heat or under too much temperature, the outside will get very soft and mushy while the inside will still be hard. We want this to be four tender while maintaining their shape. As they start to get tender, usually 12 to 15 minutes later, we can start to work on the sauce, which is very similar to what you will find in a traditional Spanish bacalao al ajillo. For that, we'll need to melt a tablespoon of butter on the medium heat, along with some olive oil and about five to six cloves of garlic. Note that it is not rare for me to add the entire head if the garlic is small. We're going to cook this on the low heat until the garlic starts to get translucent. Then we're going to add a tablespoon of sun-dried tomato paste. Cook that for a minute or so or until it breaks down. Then we're going to add a cup of tomato paste or pasta sauce as well as one cup of water. After it has been cooking on the low heat for 2-3 to three minutes, we're going to check for taste. We're seeking a sweet garlic taste profile that more often than not requires about a teaspoon of sugar to get us there. It has now been 20-25 to 25 minutes since we started our malanga isleña, so we are ready to serve. Traditionally, this dish is served with Spanish sardines, bacalao, or fish ceviche, but know that you're welcome to experiment. My name is JC and this is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel. Thank you for watching. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Thank you.